Okay, so does so anyone have anything they'd like to share this morning or as a uh, comment on anything or ask any questions? I had something, um, got something to share from the morning class. Oh, good. So when I was um, stretching uh, today, I felt something really cool that you had talked about before. And I'm kind of like, oh my God, I'm, I'm actually feeling it. Um, when we were practicing the split um, and I was pulling my toes back um, you know, towards my, my torso, there was this feeling where it felt like standing meditation where my hips kind of felt loose, like I could just, my, um, like I was almost resting on the ground and my legs felt like super strong. Um, and as I was feeling that, it was like lengthening further and further deeper into the splits. And at a certain point, I noticed the looseness feeling went away and I could feel that like my spine wasn't able to move back and forth as easily. I remember you talking about, um, you know, the, the mobility in your spine and needing to move your spine around to get the split. And then I noticed that the reason my spine couldn't move is because my liver was, was tight. And so when I like relaxed my liver and sent it to my liver, my spine started moving again. I just thought it was the coolest thing in the world because I mean, who would have ever thought the liver was related to, to um, splits and um, I'm really appreciating like having the, the nagung, um, you know, where I've <laughs> sensitized myself to my organs and then, and then having that sort of come up in the gold series. So I just wanted to um, share that because that was a really cool, um, really cool experience for me. A lot of things came together. Thank you. Yeah, that was a great sharing. You know, it's like, I, it, I can love that kind of sharing because it allows more people to realize, oh, it's not just one guy or, oh, okay, that's actually, you know, the more of us that, uh, that can feel that, the more people can actually realize, oh, this actually is a thing. Oh, so that's really good. <laughs> uh, I also want to say it's uh, some good cultivation to get to, uh, get to uh, that, that level of cultivation is a good place to be where you can feel the interconnectedness between the different things. Uh, and, you know, and that, that takes some time uh, because, you know, to feel everything all at once is actually a well-developed nervous system. And if you really think about it, you know, it, it takes years. And mm. also is actually a nervous system that's based on awareness versus focus. Because when you first start, you'll notice that you had difficulty feeling just one segment or one aspect of whatever it is you're doing, you know, like whether it's just your muscles or whether it's just your arms or, and so we start in segments and as the familiarity grows, um, our ability to place attention on more things grows all at once because of the familiarity. But, you know, that requires actually a decent amount of familiarity and also it requires a decent amount of actually just general awareness where you feel your whole body all at once. Um, and so and that, that's actually just your nervous system being exposed to actually feeling different things over and over again until it integrates by itself like that. So well done. And thank you for sharing. Thank you so much, Matt, and thank you for all the teaching that have allowed me to get to this point. Um, you're, you're welcome. <laughs> and so thank you for sharing that, and uh, that, was, that was cool. Okay, and so anyone else want to share anything uh, or make any comments or ask any questions? I had an experience of um, sort of continuing with the feeling from the other day of the dantian supporting the heart and then also the um i feel like the the feeling the sensation of uh non-duality is becoming more concrete so just oh. like tapping into that and then it um 
kind of gets me out of the uh, like over focus on the sensitivity or whatever's kind of on the imbalance. Mm -hmm. um, and it was feeling this uh, sensation of like there being sort of like a, um, it felt like there was a leak in my, in the energy body, in my heart. Like it, mm -hmm. like it was kind of, there was a hole in the back and then feeling like it was um, almost like the polarity was switched of the chakra and it wanted to turn inside out and uh, sort of like looking at the imbalance and the feeling like there needed to be more energy coming in, but then um, going back to the feedback that you've given me about like feeling the light and feeling it uh, radiating out, um, like feeling it from behind me and then and inside me and then radiating out. It felt like that sort of switched the um, polarity where, mm -hmm. like, yeah, like the chakra started, uh, I, I don't know, it's like shining from the inside out like it was supposed to. And um, so kind of playing with that today, like still feeling this sensation not feeling too well and like feeling uh, the sensation of like something going on in the back of my heart but then like how do I kind of feel that from this non-dual perspective or from light instead of having it be a drain yeah that's really good I can feel like just as you've been sharing over the weeks that uh it's building you know it's like it's like a really cool thing when you're not looking to build, but then when you come back, it's still there. Where you're looking for something mm. new, or not new, but when you're looking just to notice what is there. So, because you shouldn't be looking for new. So that was a that was a misnomer. It's kind of difficult to describe this because even if it's the same thing, it's never the same. So it's always new. But then you know, but you shouldn't be looking for something new because <laughs> then you know. So you need to just be present, I guess is a better way to say it, <laughs> but it's difficult to describe, you know, <laughs> that so, um, but anyways, you should just, you know, just from moment to moment or from day to day, uh, just check in um, and, you know, um, and you're not looking for something new, you're not looking for the same thing, or you're not looking to build, you're just checking what's there, actually. Um, and you can check whether it's still, you know, like what was there yesterday is there, you know, because it's human nature. If you have curiosity, you should also do this. It's not that you shouldn't, but the attitude primarily should be kind of just, oh, okay. It's kind of like going to the farmer's market and kind of like, oh, huh, what's there today? The farmer's market is going to show up and there's always going to be things there, but, you know, so there's a, some certain uh, aspect of consistency but then at the same time, you don't necessarily know what's going to show up, right? So, and it's kind of like going into the mountain. The mountain is always going to be there. Nature is always going to be there. It's just not necessarily, you know, clear what's going to show up that day. So, and when you do that, then sometimes you have the experience that you're having, which is you continue. And that's your system naturally building without attachment. And that's a really good thing. Um, and uh, that way of naturally building is actually really good. And so I wanted to just kind of just say that. Um, and I also wanted to say non-duality, it's not a concept, but it's an experience. As you said, it's something real. It's something that you experience. It's something you feel. Um, and if you can say that, that's good. That means that <clears throat> your cultivation is actually good and it's switching over because you're starting to experience non-duality instead of trying to be non-dual, which is conceptual. So, um, so I kind of just wanted to say that because those are really like powerful experiences. Um, 
And the other thing I want to talk about, about the polarity switching, you know, you said that you felt that your energy body or your spirit body was leaking. And I want to say your spirit body cannot leak. It is complete and perfect as it is. It can actually be temporarily be effective in some ways, but it cannot really fundamentally leak. What actually is, what can leak is actually the body. Um, and so uh, when we dial into our experiences, most likely, and the polarity is actually a physical thing because uh, the energy is a, uh, the energy itself is a manifestation of the physicalities. And so if the polarity was off and you felt that the polarity and the energy was switched, that's actually good that your attention was on the energy, but that doesn't mean that the actual energy body polarity was switched. I mean, it is switched, but it's actually in reference to the body. Now, if you just feel your spirit body, you'll notice that without the framework of your physical body, you'll notice that it actually just lets go and it's balanced as it is. But if you feel your energy body in relation to your body, then you'll notice that it can actually be off. Can you, can you uh, feel the difference? Yes, that's a very helpful distinction. Thank you. <laughs> yes. Um, so this is actually the adage in our system where we said, do not seek the creation, but seek the creator of the creation. Um, you know, go to the source is another way to say that is actually this. So what's the way is, is that when you feel your energy body or your spirit body, in relation to your body, then your spirit body will reflect where your physical body is at. Because, you know, energy is fluid. And so your attention uh, is from your physical body perspective. So you're going to feel your energy body from the perspective of the physical body. And so even if our attention is actually on our spirit body, if it's in framework or in reference to our physical body, then these things can happen. So now if we let go of our attachment of our body and just feel our spirit body, then we'll feel where our physical body is off, but it will not affect our spirit body. It is whole and it's perfect as it is, and it's unaffected and it feels good. And ironically, when your attention is in the spirit body, your physical body is just falling into balance because now you're following true north because it's a creator. It's, um, it's at the essence of what created the physical body. It's what manifested the physical body. The spirit body was first and is eternal. That feels better. So it sounds like what you're saying is basically feeling the physical body from the energy body or not even trying to, but like, if you do feel the energy body, then, you know, it, it becomes apparent where the physical body is off, but it's not the main focus. It's like within the context of the spirit body or the energy body. And then it starts mm -hmm. naturally getting into alignment. Is that right? Yes. Now, let me make a distinction here because I know that I actually just use it interchangeably too, which, mean, you know, which means that I just cause some confusion. So when typically people talk about energy body, they're talking about feeling the, uh, the energy or the energy body in reference to the body. 
That's why it's called the energy body. So you're feeling it in reference. So you'll notice that when people talk about the energy body, they're really talking about it in reference to the physical body. It's an unconscious thing. And so it kind of like the body comes first and it's like, it's almost like the energy is something that flows through the body. And it's an unconscious thing. But when you talk about spirit body, you'll notice that it's actually a little different. You identify the, your spirit body as who you are and you actually relate to it separately from your physical body where it's its own thing and actually it's the real thing if you will i mean not that there is a real or false thing but <clears throat> can you feel the difference as i'm talking yes and so when you talk about energy body you'll notice that there's always a component where you're caught up in the body where the body is the primary concern at least that's how most people use it um and so it's tied to the body and so uh, when you talk about the spirit body you know it's a different thing you know it's basically your spirit it's what continues you know after the passing of your body or the the transformation of your body and so but the spirit body is what came first for its eternal and so because of that, the body um, is a manifestation of that. And so it's actually what points true north. And so otherwise the spirit body is generous. And therefore, if you look at it from the perspective of the body, it will contort itself. That makes sense. It's like, where's the origin point and, and yes. where's the focus sounds like. Yes, yes, yes. It's like, where do you, what do you identify with? What do you believe yourself to be? What are you connected to? Right, that's another way of saying, it. identifying with something actually just means what are you connected to? That's really what we're saying when we say, you know, I identify myself as this. Are you connected to, for instance, being alone? Or are you connected to being, you know, are you connected to something greater? What are you connected to? What are you aligning yourself with? It really shows in language and how we work how much our natural orientation and foundation is towards connecting and being a part of. Even in the disconnection. Yes, even in the disconnection. No, it's not. This is really helpful. Good. Sorry, go ahead. Oh, no, I was just going to say it's disconnection, meaning as in not connecting. There isn't like, you know, it's like it's just interesting in even the wording itself. It's disconnection. It's not the other way around. It's not this disconnection. Mm -hmm. You know, it's kind mm -hmm. of like connection is more fundamental. Right. That's why we suffer when we believe that we're separate. Anytime we feel that we're separate, you know, disconnected, you know, we suffer. <clears throat> so, um, what you were saying about the energy body in reference to the body, would that be the same thing as the pain body? <laughs> That's someone else's language. I have no idea. Uh, I'm going okay. to leave it to the expert who came up with that coin <laughs> to <laughs> define that. <laughs> but, uh, you know, it could be, but, you know, uh, the energy body, 
uh, sometimes it's good, you know, people use it all the time. And so if the energy body is flowing good, then I guess it's not the pain body, but I think it creates an attachment towards where they're trying to have it be clear all the time. Uh, when the physical body needs to naturally go through ups and downs. And, you know, people have this illusion that it should always be up, you know, but if it's kind of like expecting a, to turn on a, you know, like a car or a machine and have it run without ever resting it, it's gonna break down at some point. So everything needs an up and a down, all things in nature. So, and there are some things that are eternal and we're trying to connect to those. Ironically, not so that we can actually always be up, but so that when the things that are actually always eternal, they provide a reference point for you to have a good balance between up and down so that it can be eternal, so that you can find the night, the right balance between up and down. And so you're not connecting to the eternal things so that you can always be up. I'm not saying that you're saying that, but you know, <laughs> I'm just talking about the general state of where things seems to be nowadays. Uh, but you're connecting to the eternal things so that you can see kind of like when you look at the horizon, you can see, you know, things better. You know, it's like the, the longer uh, measuring stick you have, you know, the better perspective you have. So if you have better perspective, then you can see when things, things should go up and when things should come, come down. Um, and, and so those are, that's a relationship between the absolute and the relative. The absolute provides a reference point for the relative to find balance so that it can also be absolute. And it sounds like then we have the opportunity to experience the downs from the perspective of the absolute. So it's different. Yes. Yeah. Yes, you get to enjoy it and appreciate it for what it provides instead of actually, you know, defining. So the Tao Te Ching talks about that. If you define something good, then there's bad. Meaning, and what they're talking about is, is that if you define something as good, then you're going to define whatever the opposite that's naturally balancing it as something undesirable and you're going to suffer because of that. You're going to, it's basically saying you're going to suffer because of your definition, not because of what it actually is. If you define something beautiful, that means that something is ugly. But it's actually fundamentally questioning, does that even make sense? How can there be anything ugly in the world? And of course, you know, <laughs> I can see some people going immediately, well, there are ugly things. And, <laughs> but <laughs> I'm not saying that there aren't ugly things. I'm just saying that everything is in a balance. And, you know, without the balance, we can't appreciate anything. And if we can't appreciate the balance itself, then we're always resisting something. We're not accepting the whole. So. Thank you, Master Kim. Yeah, super helpful. Just the, it feels like a very, in some ways, subtle distinction, what you're saying about um, attention on the spirit body versus on the energy body with reference to the physical. But uh, yeah, the path is narrow. I mean, it seems like, you know, that's sort of the hinge for all of this. You know, it's like the, where you put your attention mm. in the, like, most, subtle of ways, um, even if it's like a hair off, it's still off mm. by an inch, off by a mile. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Well, it's a very nature of balance, right? Mm. When, when was balance ever? Yeah, balance is a narrow thing. <laughs> the, the issue is, you know, but the way people look at it is, it, it, people make it difficult. If you relax, balance is easy. If you tense, balance is super hard. If you're forceful, balance is near impossible. Um, but if you relax and don't force things, then balance comes. Now, this is starting to sound more like a classic traditional Tao, Tao Te Ching discussion. But so, yeah, so depending on how you want to look at it, 
balance is the most wide thing, uh, depending on how you look at it, or it can be the most narrow thing. But you could also say if it's good, it's narrow, you can find it. Um, and it's easy to find it because it's so narrow. If it was wide, it'd be difficult to find it. Um, and, you know, but, but then don't you need to balance things? And well, that connotates the sense of control. Who said that any, <laughs> you need to control anything? Uh, you know, why does balance need to be controlled? Isn't balancing a balance a natural thing that occurs by itself? Don't we just need to write it? And how do you write it? You look into the horizon like you're surfing and you relax and you enjoy the waves. And you just get better at surfing so you have more fun. So that's one perspective. But I am done cleaning and I'm running late. So I got a call the day for today. So thank you so much, Master Kim. You're welcome. Thank you for uh, uh, the sharing. And as, uh, I wish you all a great day of surfing. Thank you so much, Master Kim. You're welcome. Thank you, Master Kim. You're welcome. Thank you so much, Master welcome thank you mr Ken. you're welcome bye you're welcome bye bye